Hi, welcome to episode 39, November 3, 2017. The Integrate 2017 USA Highlight Show. So, in this episode, we're going to talk about the highlights from um, Integrate USA from last week. And we also have the Community Corner where there's some recap blogs of Integrate and another one, Teams, BizTalk and BusyBot. So enjoy the video where me and Ken Weir are discussing the highlights of Integrate USA. Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday. Hello, welcome to Middleware Friday. I'm Stephen Wiggers. And I'm Ken Weir. And we just went to uh, see a Seahawks game from a sports bar, which was a very interesting and very close game. But your team won, won, right? Exactly. You know, there's a saying when Steph's in the house, it's the Dutch 12 men, <laughs> Seahawks never lose. So far you're right. Yeah, you so far. You've got a streak going. So, 100% yeah. so far in the last couple of years. Hard to argue with that. Exactly. Okay, but, so let's talk about Integrate though. Yes, yeah, let's talk about Integrate. We're not from Football Weekly, as nope. much as we both like football. So, so we want to talk about the Integrate USA yeah. recap. Uh, for the event that just happened this mm -hmm. past week. So, what do you got for week for day one? What was your uh, yeah. so, some of your highlights? So, day one, three day conference. Of course, Jim Herrick kicked things off. Uh, the one thing that stood out, of course, limited possibilities with Logic Apps and all the other integration capabilities with Cognitive Search, API Management, and Logic Apps. Uh, with serverless computing, so reduce dev up, reduce the marking per action billing. And what really stand out is that there's a new. Uh, billing for Logic Apps, so that was one of the announcements of day one. So they kind of announced that the different uh, billing model, including the new billing model for the on-premise data gateway yeah. um, connector. So, for example, SAP yeah. uh, is now a uh, per action or I guess per execution mm -hmm. type uh, model, which yeah. is uh, a little bit friendlier. So I think that's that's really good for for customers. Yeah, so I think, definitely think if you watch the tweets, the, that the new pricing model got quite some attention and reach and retweets. Uh, the standard integration account um, kind of is 500 XML schemas and maps, uh, partners and agreements around 500, and it's one buck for the five an hour. So it's all totally different than I think the monthly SQ they had or payment for sure for the integration account. And then also the introduction of the basic integration mm -hmm. account, right? Oh, yeah. So that was something that. Uh, people were interested in was a sort of a smaller tier um, that allows them to get started and then they can grow into grow into larger accounts if need be once they start to roll more and more of these schemas maps and agreements out so I think that's also welcome news for yeah, exactly. for customers so that's yeah. pretty cool so the basic innovation account is like 50 XML schemas and maps so that's one tenth of the uh, standard it's two partners one agreement and it's on about 0.4 dollar an hour so yeah you definitely can ramp up if necessary and free still exists mm -hmm. for those that want to be able to you know do some initial proof of concepts or some initial development work so that's that still exists as well which is obviously yeah. great yeah, and of course, uh, Dan also Nova uh, coming coming on with the uh, integration of uh, sorry with the uh, service bus team, so with Shuba and um, another guy from his team called Christian Wolf. And what kind of stand out? The message was like, okay, the service bus event hub storage queues or event crib is not like versus versus versus. Kind of just use the right tool for the right job. So I think that was a very good statement. And uh, there's uh, Azure GDR uh, capability for uh, event hubs, something that Shuba announced that was very interesting. There's some uh, and things around the service bus, um, uh, some announcements there as well. Um, Including geo da disaster yeah. recovery. One of those again. Then going forward, there was another very interesting announcement uh, during John Fancy's talk about uh, enterprise integration with Logic Apps as he announced uh, Liquid, which is for uh, more complex adjacent to JSON mapping. Have you ever heard of Liquid? No, it was no. completely new to me, mm -hmm. and I can see mm -hmm. based upon uh, their slides that it uh, looks like it was incubated by a fine Canadian yeah. company called Shopify, uh -huh. which provides uh, like SaaS-based mm -hmm. applications for marketplaces. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small to medium-sized business, you want to run an online store, you can actually use Shopify. So they've got some significant scale, so mm -hmm. I su suspect that they've been able to solve some, some big problems um, using this, and it's it's been made available on GitHub. So sounds pretty cool, definitely yeah. worth... Uh, Digging into some more. Yeah, so definitely there was a big announcement around mapping and there were some other things. If you watch this video, they will have something like JSON to text and XSLT 3.0 support. 
Then Logic Apps was there as well with some other announcements. Uh, I think one of the interesting ones was like SOAP uh, uh, support. So Agreed. It's yeah. still relevant in the enterprise. You're still not going to get away from it. So I think that's good. There's another mm -hmm. user voice request. Yeah. Yeah. Highly requested. So great to see the product group listening and uh, taking that feedback and delivering. So, so good for them. Yeah. So that kind of sums up especially what happened in day one. And of course then we had day two. So what happened? So day two, I think, um, so the API management team uh, was in, uh, they had a session on day two and they talked about a feature that a lot of customers have been looking for around API versioning, which I think is pretty important. Yeah. Um, as you have updates or you're onboarding new trading partners, they have a little, little bit different requirements, you need to update your API. How do you support both the new and the old? So they've come up with some strategies and some tooling that helps support organizations deal with that. Uh, certainly, the uh, there was an advanced logic app session, which was good. Uh, they were able to open the hood per se and actually walk us through um, some deep scenarios and how the engine works, and demonstrate some of the reliability and robustness that does exist in the underlying platform. They also talked about um, some advanced messaging patterns, such as uh, you know parallelism and the degree of parallel parallelism. So, so I think that was that was good. That was interesting. And something that beyond, besides London, hadn't really been talked about mm -hmm. before. So for those that really wanted to, yeah. to truly understand the underlying architecture, it was nice to see that uh, transparency. Uh, also, so Flow, obviously um, a little Flow, bit yeah. biased, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. So my colleague Anjali was on, and she was showing some of the capabilities of Microsoft Flow. And I think these were surprise some people, mm -hmm. just based upon some hallway conversations and questions that I had just around approvals. Mm -hmm. and. We have a first class approval solution um, in part due to our mobile application where yeah. you can actually approve or decline uh, different approvals from your mobile phone I um, mean, a very rich experience. I think that was cool. Also buttons I think surprised people um, where you have the ability to have physical buttons um, execute or mm -hmm. launch uh, yeah. Microsoft Flow. So the scenario was related to Contoso Fitness, and yeah. if you had a piece of equipment that is, uh, say, broken or needs maintenance, click the button, click the button and uh, sure enough, yeah. uh, someone could get a, a text notification or some other notification mm -hmm. that would allow them to go um, fix that piece of equipment. So I think that was pretty cool as well. And then just talked a little bit about some of the um, administrative features that exist in Flow, which are naturally always of interest to the, the enterprise uh, folk or audience because they want to know how you can manage these. The whole idea is you're supposed to empower more business users, mm -hmm. give them self-service capabilities, but how can you ensure governance? And Flow does have an admin center where it talks about environments, data loss um, protection, and some you know local agility for your end users, but having centralized control as well. Um, so I think that was, that was interesting. Also, Saravana, um, he had talked about BizTalk 360 yeah. and some of his favorite features and capabilities that exist in his platform and some of them include the graphical message flow, um, auto healing, which is certainly something that I know personally I've benefited from if yeah. you have those endpoints that uh, have uh, disappeared for whatever reason and you've got a receive location trying to connect and can't, um, BizTalk 360 has your back and will enable those receive locations or at least try to th through a series of attempts. And uh, so I think that's been very useful for me in the past. And now, of course, we get bots, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, an amazing session by yes. this very smart guy. Mm -hmm. no, kidding. Uh, so that was a session that I had uh, provided, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really around bots and their role in digital transformation. I talked about mm -hmm. how digital transformation is such a loaded term and something yeah. that I've started to, to actually despise, uh, I'd say, in 2016, and now I'm starting to appreciate when it's put into the right context. And I refer to a quote from Ray Wang, who's a uh, CEO and founder of uh, Constellation Research. And he talks about digital transformation as the methodology in which organizations create new business models and culture with digital technologies. And I think that nails it for me. Um, oftentimes there's too much hype and not enough substance. And I think if you start to think about how you can change the way your business operates or if how you can change the way your people work um, using digital technologies, that is... Exactly. truly the the essence of digital transformation. So when we talk about bots, that's what we're talking about, is changing the way people work and actually having a piece of software being able to execute tasks on behalf of people requesting that. Uh, we talked a little bit about different personas 
um, where we had both the Pro Integrator, um, who is very comfortable in Visual Studio and Azure, um, building these bots using the bot framework, Azure API Management, Azure Logic Apps, in order to provide this connectivity plane yeah. to all of these different systems, whether it be cloud or on-prem. Next, we talked about the, the Citizen Integrator. I almost said Senior Citizen Integrator, yeah. but, but no, it's, uh, it's the Citizen Integrator. And uh, in this case, it's you know, someone in the business who is, um, you know, might have a technical background, mm -hmm. wants this self-service solution. They want to be able to build some of these you know, simpler scenarios and actually get some productivity out of it. And in this case, the persona was a, a fellow named Stuart who works as an HRIS um, resource inside of Human Resources. And what they want is they want the ability to expose some self-service functionality to their end users around HR master data, and they can do that through a bot. Now, the bot in this case was built in Microsoft Teams and Flow and was facilitated through a connector called Busy, which is a third-party connector from H3. And it really allows you the ability to create these, these bots with no code, which I think is very empowering yeah. for end users um, who can build out some pretty interesting scenarios uh, doing this. Now, one, one thing that uh, I was really um, rewarding for me was to have an attendee who saw yeah. my session on a Thursday. One of your old colleagues, I believe? Or uh, no, no, I never actually worked with him. I worked with someone that he's worked with, okay, uh, with yeah. before. But, uh -huh. um, and he actually uh, built a bot Thursday evening mm -hmm. and uh, oh, yeah, true, yeah. showed it to me on Friday he showed it to me too. morning. Very happy, yeah. And uh, in this case, the person's a, a pro dev, very capable, very um, you know, happy and comfortable in Visual mm -hmm. Studio and the Azure portal, but he saw this as a way to simplify his job and actually make him more productive. And it was really around yeah. how you could execute management tasks for their BizTalk installation. So they're using the feature pack of BizTalk Server 2016. He now can call upon different actions against the BizTalk services. So enabling a receive location, stopping a receive location, uh, restarting host instance, things like that. Yep. So now if he gets a BizTalk 360 alert, you know, he can simply issue a few commands to a bot and have those actions fulfilled. So I thought that was really cool yep. to see someone who, even though they're not per se a citizen integrator, using these tools um, in, a, in order to have some personal productivity. Uh, so I think that was good. And the last yep. demo I, I talked about was um, the ad hoc integrator who is... Uh, you know, it's a bit of a gray area in terms of what tool set they want to be comfortable, they're more, most comfortable with. I think it's going to depend on the person, depend on the organization. And in some cases, they may choose Logic Apps. Yeah. In other cases, they may choose Flow. And, but we did talk about the scenario around access management and creating a bot that would allow someone to request access or to create an Azure AD group, mm -hmm. have it go through Flow approvals, um, use the Azure Active Directory connector to both create a group and then add themselves add the the approved person into that group and then lastly uh, log this all in service now using the new uh, connector for both logic apps and flow for mm -hmm. service now so I thought that was pretty good yeah. and certainly if you get into a situation where you know someone has built a flow and you know it's either become complex or it's difficult to manage and they want to move that mm -hmm. more to a, an expert team they actually have the ability to grow up um, and into a logic app and actually export the artifact from Microsoft Flow and import it into the Azure portal and have it run as a logic app and then add whatever additional capability they need. Maybe it's um, you know more like flow control or you need exception handling or you need to consume a custom API. Um, you know that's an opportunity for you as well. And uh, so let's talk about your session. Oh I wow! Who yeah. better than than you to talk yeah, about your okay. session? So. Yeah, well, I talked about the same as in London about powering a business using Logic Apps. Um, I kind of had a few scenarios where Logic App really stand out. That's either um, um, using, for instance, in the startup company that uh, Mick Badwin, who's a fellow MVP from Mick, Australia, yeah. Yeah, he uses uh, Logic Apps in the background for his uh, My Tailored Energy. So, um, kind of, you have utility companies providing uh, energy. You know that you've been in utilities. Yeah, space. I've heard of that space. Yeah. There's consumption on the other end by you know the end user that's uh, like you know, in your home, and you kind of can match out or find out what's the best pricing plan for which utility company, and in certain situations that could save you money. It kind of is a comparison type of tool, 
and, it, and kind of in the background use a lot of logic app you know to get all the data feed of all the price uh, price plans and, and and stuff that the utility companies put out something similar was what uh, Swiss Re that's a company uh, um, I'm currently working for now uh, has uh, put out as well and in terms of um, uh, micro insurance so it's called a flight to nay um, compensation and that's a service that's out there that you can uh, read about a reference case about it so and in the background again similar to what the startup in the mixed situation with mighty uh, my tailored energy is again hard, uh, is collecting all the data feeds around in this case uh, flights and where potential delays could occur and then use that as uh, um, to kind of enable you to do um, uh, Bet against well, it's kind of bet against your own uh, delay. We could get a compensation for it, but it's more like that. In the background, you have a solution uh, running in Azure that can, composes of, of some of the integration services. One of it, which is kind of uh, logic apps. And then, of course, we uh, we kind of can dive into you know the last and third day, which is um, was like a half day. So compared to London, it was like a full day. Half day was more like. Uh, like a few sessions, so one of which was uh, of, of Richard Sroder. Yeah, I really liked his yeah. session. So it was yeah. it was very uh, similar mm -hmm. to the one mm -hmm. he did give in, yeah. in London. So yeah. the good news about that is that you can actually go onto the Vistock 360 mm -hmm. site mm -hmm. and find it. And yeah. I think the, you know, so he talked about cloud native integration, mm -hmm. and I guess there was a few things that really stuck out for me. Um, one was this idea that as integrators, you have the ability to either be the bottleneck or you can actually be the change agent. Yeah. Um, if you think about the skill set that integrators have, um, you're used to change. You're used to mm -hmm. some of the complexity. You're starting to connect all of these different systems together that really were never designed to work together and now you're sitting in the middle trying to wire all of this up. And I think that was a, a big point for me because I do see the integration landscape changing. We're seeing it with these new tools. You know, logic apps, you can be you know, extremely productive using that tool. Um, you have so many connectors. There's all yeah. these features and capabilities, and it keeps coming at this like very quick pace. I think you also yeah. you've got tools like Flow, which is more on the citizen side, but it's really an empowering solution. Something that mm -hmm. you couldn't really do in the Microsoft platform a few years ago um, with either of those technologies. Now they're really democratizing yeah. integration. So it's this idea that if you live in a center of excellence, um, you actually could be doing you know, causing some harm within your organization in the sense of missing out on opportunities. And I think part of it is that, you know, this integration skill set is being democratized. It is being made available to other personas and other parts yeah. of the business. And it's one of those things where you have an opportunity to embrace that yeah. um, in order to actually get more results for your business. Because at the end of the day, every industry is becoming more and more competitive and organizations need to be able to mm -hmm. do more with the people and the tools that they have. So. I really enjoyed it. I think it was um, a little bit forward thinking, uh, which is good, right? I think it gives people an opportunity to digest it, reflect on it, look for opportunities in their organization uh, before they sort of miss the proverbial, proverbial train. So definitely check it out. Um, obviously, Richard is always a, a good speaker, yeah. but I enjoyed the session even though I had uh, seen most of it before, but yeah. uh, definitely check it out. And the other thing, uh, really, in the third day that stands out is that uh, again, Saravanas took the stage and talked about uh, you know Service Bus 360, but also what's coming. And what's interesting is that this technology is is at least Service Bus 360 now it gives you the ability to do some uh, monitoring and management upon uh, Service Bus services like uh, event hubs, relay, uh, messaging, topics, subscriptions and logic apps, but for the future he's kind of setting out a roadmap that he also is going to provide the capability of uh, monitoring and managing functions, API management, stream analytics and even event grid which is a, a new service as well. And the other thing he did during his session was that he also announced a new product, so he's going for a third product, which is called Atomic Scope. So he didn't was able to showcase anything yet, but he was kind of announcing it that it's going to be launched in 218. So that kind of stands out too. And there's a website where you can go to, which is called httpgobistock360.com slash atomic scope. So that's where you can find out a little bit more about this uh, new upcoming product. Then we had Nick Hogenstein talk a little bit more about uh, predominantly machine learning. 
um, what you can do there. Uh, there's a great um, um, what do you call training out there on edX that really teaches you how to do work with data science. It includes also machine learning and some of the stuff that Nick Hogan showcase was there as well. Um, and then we had um, Stephen Thomas, Thomas yeah. Yeah, talking about some of the stuff where you can do a logic app. So I talked to more in day two about some of the real world cases, some of the other things you can do based on some of the views. But we, he really kind of, you know, a lot of his experience with some of the uh, logic app uh, training, or at least not training, I mean, uh, projects he's done. Um, he talked through his through and especially he talked about how you have to rethink uh, the architecture basically for the integration solution. Yeah, I think it's what's what's interesting about this um, session was that people always talk about, you know, mm -hmm. give me some production use cases, mm -hmm. like who's using Logic Apps in yeah. production, and the, his talk was largely related or built yeah. upon his real real world experience rolling exactly. out yeah. Logic Apps to his you know some of his enterprise customers. So mm -hmm. that was what's interesting. It was um, it was very real in the sense like this is my experience. These are the yeah. things that um, have worked really well for us. These are the things that I would do a little bit differently. I think that was interesting as well because mm -hmm. the service is changing all of the time and they're adding more and more capabilities. He kind of, you know, sat back and reflected and said, hey, like six months ago there there might have been a cap on, say, the number of times you can loop, whereas now that's been expanded yeah. upon. So how does that change the way I think of this? So I think, you know, a great practical mm -hmm. real world yeah. session, which is always, you know, great to see in these type of events. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of it. So, so oh, hey, hey, you know, kind of it. Sandra's gonna like. We gotta talk about Sandra's session. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Sorry. We should talk about yeah, Sandra. Yeah. Okay, so we <laughs> talked about Sandro. He did a great session on uh, based on fast and loud. He did the same in London. But what's really interesting it stands out that he has some nicks and necks to really squeeze out the uh, maximum performance out of your biz talk. So he went through some of the tips and tricks, what you need to do around databases, networking, disks, etc. And while well, you can watch the recording for London, he kind of did the similar thing here. Sure. It's, it's, it's really interesting. But I think what's yeah. also interesting about that, once again, yeah. it's like very real world. And oh, I think there's sure, yeah. some, I guess, insight that yeah. everyone uh, received while they were at this conference was that there still is a lot of biz oh, sure, yeah. server in the field um, being used in production. Yeah. And I think a lot of people appreciated his session in part to that he was providing some real world yeah. experience right once again and really talking about how to optimize your environments without doing anything crazy. He's not telling you to go buy new hardware. No. But he's really, you know, some of the the yeah. tweaks that you can make from a configuration perspective. And um, once again I thought it was a great session, real world um, experience and yeah, then he had a lot of a lot of people asking him yeah. questions about uh, and certainly, uh, Sandra is yeah. one of the BizTalk yeah. experts in the world, so I think yeah. uh, it was, a, once again, a good session. Yeah, that was a great BizTalk crowd out there, also on day two when they announced kind of feature pack two. Um, I did some sentiment analysis of what was going on during Integrate uh, to showcase how you can derive value from Logic App and from that perspective. But the, the funny thing that's really stand out, we talked about t uh, all types of technology, Logic App, Function and Flow, etc. So all what you can find in the cloud. But one that got the most kind of reach, uh, the most like say up there in its sentiment was like the launch of Feature Pack 2. It still True. says that like, yeah. you know, BizTalk is still very, very relevant. So um, yeah, with that as uh, kind of we come to a conclusion that, you know, the Integrate US was just as Integrate London was a great success. Good job done by Sarvana and BizTalk 360. Yes, hats off yeah, to that, hats off the whole that, team. Yeah, they, done, they pulled, off, pulled it off again. I think it was much appreciated and uh, they kind of announced that they probably will do it again in the US next year. And Europe is definitely going through for sure, so the European version will be there, but I also hope that they were able to organize this event in the US again. Um, Which is great, in this yeah. case it was uh, Redmond Campus, yeah. Building yeah. 92, uh, right above the Visitor yeah. Center, so it's always nice to, um, to be able to go to the Redmond Campus and I think what was Different about this one versus London, which yeah. is how many Microsoft folks were in the room. Sure. Yeah. So, like a good proportion yeah. of the uh, BizTalk and Logic Apps engineering teams mm -hmm. were able to sit the there, services. Yeah. yeah, talk to yeah. different customers and mm -hmm. partners about their solutions. Okay, I hope you liked that video uh, us talking and discussing the highlights of the Integrate USA. Um, there's also some recap blogs you can find on the BizTalk 360 blog. 
So definitely worth checking out if you want to read through what happened. We, of course, did not have the time, otherwise it would be a very lengthy show to discuss every um, presentation, but you can find um, some more detailed in, um, discussions or let's say um, summary of the sessions given during the Integrate um, last week in Redmond. And then there's also another blog by Anthony C who wrote a blog after uh, seeing Kent Weir's session on um, BusyBot and Flow. And based on, on that, he created another um, bot around BizTalk and Teams. So definitely worth checking out how that works and what he's done, and you can find it on his blog. Okay, if there's any feedback, please keep them coming through Twitter or the email middleatfriday at gmail.com. It's a welcome where to discuss this stuff. And I also like to thank Vista360 for being a great host and done an excellent job of organizing Integrate um, in the US last week. So job well done. And I'll leave you with the music credits. <laughs> Thank you.